Francis McClure. Found another one of a prize steer butcher this morning. I told you talk wouldn't be enough for a man like Blake McCall, Pa. The only kind of talk he understands comes out of this. Looks to me like they picked up a little company. They didn't have a wagon the last time we ran them off here. We gonna let them get away with it, Pa? He has the sickness of gold, senor. You have already given him more chance than he deserves. Jose, it's a family affair. What I have, I owe to you, old friend. Something that would destroy the Ponderosa would also destroy me. Your fight is my fight. All right, let's visit with Mr. McCall. Pass. Ponderosa, John. That means we'll be running into the Cartwrights before long. Well, let's hope you'll make out better with them this time than last. John, that isn't fair. Blake did the very best he could. Well, your brother doesn't always approve of my methods, Emily. Think you could do better, John? I'd like to try talking with them. They're people, same as you and I, I think. <laughs> oh, man, Cartwright and his three sons? Yeah, they're people, all right. Rough ones. Now, what happened between you and them? Thought we were partners, John. Partners don't pry, they trust one another. Are you implying I don't trust you? That's ridiculous. John, please, you're letting yourself get all on edge. Well, I'm sorry, Emily. It's just that I'm, I'm worried about your health. I need to get you into that high desert country without delay. Well, I think you better get some rest. What's the matter, McCall? You letting your love life interfere with your money making? Take my advice, you get rid of her and Pennington, both of them. There's gold here. Besides, she ain't gonna last much longer anyway. Krug, don't you ever let me hear you say that again. It's the truth, ain't it? Well, I'd say we were flattered to have the great Mr. Ben Cartwright pay us a call. Uh, my name is uh, John Pennington. Uh, we're on our way to that new mining area at Virginia City. We were told this was the best way to get there. Well, you were told wrong. You're on private property. Uh, other people have come through here? They have. And they've slaughtered our beef, cut and burned our timber, and dug holes in our best pasture land. Are we to be blamed for the actions of other people? When you're standing alongside one of the worst offenders, yes. Now, we told you to get off last month, McCall, and we meant for you to stay off. Blake, what's he talking about? Very simple, Emily. The great Ben Cartwright thinks he owns the world. Now, just this part of it, Mr. McCall. Now, I'll ask you to get off my land. All of you. Please, Mr. Cartwright, if I may speak, uh, my name is Justin Flannery. My only purpose here is to obtain specimens of Sierra flora and fauna. You see, sir, by profession, I'm a botanist and entomologist. You see, sir, I only fell in with these people two days ago. Well, you made a very poor choice, Mr. Flannery. That's an unfair thing to say, Mr. Cartwright. You don't even know us. If my partner caused you any damage, I'm sure we can arrive at a settlement. I'm afraid we can't. Or can't I even reason with you? Mr. Bennington, your reasoning became apparent when you introduced hydraulic mining to California. Oh, I've seen the operations of Pennington and McCall. Thousands of acres of virgin timber uprooted. Mountains washed away. 
Floods caused by the debris of your monitors. Orchards buried under mud. Us. See what you can do for him. Sure, Paul. You keep away from him. You ugly brute. Ma'am, I can't hardly help being ugly, can I? Ain't him hurt bad. Oh, Blake. Now, nobody could be as unreasonable as these Cartwrights seem to be. You must have done something to turn them against us. Well, you don't have to do too much. I had those Cartwrights turn against you. All right, maybe we did cut down a couple of their precious trees and Krug shot one of their cows. Believe me, it was an accident. He thought it was a deer. Well, that's the kind of accident we could do without, huh? Now, uh, be a little more careful next time, will you? Now, look, John. I don't tell you how to run the office. Don't tell me how to run my end of this partnership. Blake, I wish you two wouldn't quarrel so. Are you really in love with him? Well, you and he are all I have left. That's why I don't want any trouble between you. <laughs> don't worry, Emily. Blake and I get along fine. The main thing is to get you into that drier climate without delay. Now you go back in the tent and get some rest, huh? That's right, just get some rest. Two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. Don't exert yourself. Just sit and look pretty. John? Huh? Do you think there's any hope? Oh, of course there's hope. If you keep believing, you'll get well. Just as I have to keep believing, I have a right to love. I have to keep believing that, John. Because if I couldn't, I'd want to die. Mr. Cartwright, I demand you allow us to pass through here. Uh, how is he, son? He's all right, Paul. It's just a crease. Mr. Cartwright, why don't you answer my brother's request? And why are you so unreasonable? Why am I so unreasonable? Miss Bennington, I'd like to tell you about a friend of mine. He came across the plains with me, and all the way across, he nursed a wagon load of young peach trees, had a dream, wanted to plant an orchard in California. Well, I saw what was left of that orchard last year, buried under a dozen feet of mud, washed down by your brother's hydraulic monitors. Oh, I remember the man. I paid him twice what his land was worth. I, I paid for each of his trees. Well, just what price do you put on the dream of a man's lifetime? My brother has no intention of bringing hydraulic equipment into the Sierra. No? Then why is he here, Miss Pennington? No, I swear to you, we have no intention of staying on your Ponderosa ranch. Sorry, but I, uh, I find that hard to believe. See, the facts are, your partner has filed claims in some of the neighboring ranches. Ranches that contain watershed vital to the Ponderosa. Well, don't look so suspicious, John. The claims were filed in the name of the partnership. Uh, we'll have to relinquish them. I don't agree. They're perfectly legal. We'll keep them and we'll work them. I disagree. Nobody is going to destroy the Ponderosa. Oh, what do you plan to do, Mr. Cartwright? Stop every man who comes over those mountains? I'll fight for what's mine and what I believe in. And when a man who believes differently comes along, what do you do then? Kill him? If I have to. Pattern of history, Mr. Cartwright. A man with a dream goes into a country knowing he'll be killed. But after him come two more, and then two more. And the military are along to protect them. And then they build a fort to house the military. And soon they own the country. Yes, it's happened many times. Be careful history doesn't repeat itself. Mr. Cartwright, can't you see your way clear just this once? Uh, I told you my sister wasn't well, and now we have a wounded man on our hands, and... Don't beg, John. You, uh, camp here until you rest up. Get your stock in shape. Anything we can do for your sister? Save your concern, Mr. Cartwright. <coughs> uh, 
Blake, why didn't you tell me about these claims? Well, I meant to, John. I just didn't get around. Well, you were supposed to be following through on that assay report in the Washoe. Now, John, we have as much right to this watershed land as Cartwright has. Do you know what hydraulic operations will do to these hills? I don't care what they'll do to these hills. I just want the gold on these hills. You'd do just about anything to get it, wouldn't you? Blake, why don't we just forget about it and go on to Warsaw the way we planned? Well, now, that's easy for you to say, isn't it? You and your brother both, sure, your father left you a mining company and a million dollars to play around with. Blake, what's got into you? Just this. I want to make it clear that the only thing my father left me was a bunch of debts and bruises on my back. What I got, I dug out of the ground with these hands, and nobody's going to stop me from digging out more of it. But it's not important. I've told you that before. It has nothing to do with you and me. No, oh, doesn't it? What do you spend your time talking about? That fine mansion where you were raised, the servants you had, the beautiful horses. Well, you're the one that always asks me about those things. You say you like to hear about them. And you like to remind me that I never had them. Blake, that's not so. Just a second. What... John, please. You said that you loved me. I do, Emily. More than anything else in the world, you're everything I've ever wanted. And those things don't matter. Just give me a chance to get well. And just give me a chance to be everything that you want me to be. <clears throat> Someday we'll have everything we've ever wanted. Well, you're gonna let old Ben Cartwright back you down, huh? Who says so? Pennington. You take your orders from Pennington? Well, now, you know, I was beginning to wonder about that. A few years ago, when I first knew you, there was no doubt about it. I took my orders from you. You still do. Oh, sure. Maybe when you two get married, you can use your wife's money to keep me on the payroll. That's more like it. You just say the word, boss. You just remember that. I'm boss. That's the way I like it. Boss. You know the, uh, the bug hunter, Flannery? He says he's going on alone. Yeah, let him go. Well, I figured to. Except I was thinking... It'd be a shame if the Cartwrights should shoot him down on sight, wouldn't it? What makes you think they will? Well, you never can tell. Of course, if they did, it'd go kind of hard on them. Cold-blooded murder and all. Yep. There must be a lot of folks up here in these hills that don't like the Cartwrights any better than we do. Think what'd happen if they was to murder him. Cold blood, a poor, harmless little old coot like Flannery over there. Come on, Christian, let's go. <clears throat> Think I'll take myself a little ride. Crook. Yeah. Where? In the Cartwright's front yard? See if we can make up for yesterday and dry some cows today. Right. Hey, Paul. Hmm? You got that bug, honey? Yes, it's Mr. Flannery. Do you want me to run him off, Paul? No, no, no. Cartwright, I must apologize for coming. Cartwright coming. He was 
walking toward us. And he was shot from behind. How'd it happen? An unarmed man whose only crime was setting foot on your precious ground. I wouldn't do that. You butchers. All of you. You're quick to accuse, Miss Pennington. But wasn't it you who mentioned about a man being sent into the enemy camp in order to be a known casualty? This was a planned murder. Someone here is guilty. Well, now, who do you think's going to believe you? The decent people in this part of the country hear about this, they're going to ride on your place and wipe out the whole stinking Cartwright clan. Looks like you've got it all figured out, don't you, McCall? How would you like to start wiping us out right now? That's enough. Take their guns. What are you going to do? Kill us too? You're going back to California. All of you. Oh, you're drawing a pretty fine line on murder, aren't you, Cartwright? Now, we're out of supplies. I told you my sister's sick. And you're going to make us go back through that country without food and guns and our stock worn out? Oh, isn't that murder? Mr. Pennington, Paul wouldn't do that. <laughs> we brought along fresh stock and supplies by mule pack. I'm going to be riding along with you. You? As our guard? Well, no, ma'am. You see, I'm going to be going along to make sure no harm comes to you. <coughs> ma'am, <coughs> I wouldn't hurt you. Not for nothing. Hey, little Joe or Adam, go along instead of me. We talked it out, Hoss. We think you can do this best. Come. Hey! Be careful what you're driving, you hear? Ain't no use in making it any rougher on the lady than you got. Partner, they talking to you. Of course, I never could figure you and him being partners in the first place. Not that I blame you, none. You got some money out of it. Pretty girl. Krug, you're gonna push me once too often. I am? I don't mean to. As a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about maybe working out a partnership on them claims you filed. What well, makes you think I'd want to share with you? Well, I was thinking about you and that bug hunter. I didn't kill him. Oh, I guess you didn't. You're just about as responsible as if you did. All right. Let's get moving. Well, you have to admit I do pretty well with what I have. Thank you. You, you could have a lot more. <clears throat> You'd be out in the desert. Not on the way back to California. Are you blaming me for that? You think it was my fault that Flannery was shot? No, I'm just a little sick of the way fighting and killing follows everything you do. You and your pretty little world, all wrapped up in tinsel. How do you think I got that land we hydraulic in California? You sat back in your plush office when I went out there and fought for what we had, every inch of it. Aren't you forgetting why we're making this trip? Well, didn't we agree on it? We both knew Emily had to get to a drier climate. John. <coughs> well, are, are you forgetting or are the things more important? <coughs> Can't you control that miserable coffin? <coughs> These fir branches will make a good bed for you, ma'am. You just put them in the ground with the, the needle end up. And you'll sleep a lot better. The smell of that fur will be good for that cough, too. Night. Boy's got you some extra oats coming tonight. Long, hard climb we had today. But you're gonna feel a lot better soon as old boss gets you all scrubbed down here. They they like for you to talk to them. It makes them feel good.
You really love horses, don't you? Oh, yes, I'm. I like all animals. You can trust them. But you can't trust people? Well, I wouldn't say that. It's, it's just that some folks have got a, a natural mean streak in them that animals just don't know nothing about, I guess. What do you What do you expect me to do? That big moose could break your back with one hand. Yeah. Rough on men, but easy on horses. He pays more attention to the stock than he does to us. Yeah, I noticed that. Maybe if one of the horses was to go lame tomorrow? Uh, even if we could handle that big moosey, we still need guns and ammunition before we could tackle the rest of the guard right? That foreman of theirs. Uh, Jose Moreno. He don't live far from here. He'd have guns. What about Pennington and Emily? Well, now, that's your problem. Me, I'm just a simple man. All I care about's the gold. <laughs> see some mighty pretty country today. Matter of fact, if you'll look off right through the trees down there, you can see the lake now. Pretty, ain't it? That off horse over there's got a mighty tender mouth, so don't go sawing the lines too hard, you hear? Gone lame. How long's he been lame? Oh, about a half hour, I guess. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, boy, looks like you picked up a stone. Either you get the guns from Marino your way, or we'll get them our way. Hey, Senor Hawes! My good friend, I'm so glad to see you! <laughs> Ay, caramba! The miners, they still dig like gophers down at the flat. Senor horse, is everything all right? Jose, we're going to have to be careful. I wouldn't. Well, you finally came to it, didn't you? Outright murder. I told you I wouldn't let anything stand in my way. It's the only way to fight the Cartwrights. Don't you see? I was only thinking of you, Emily. You never could think of anybody but yourself, Blake. And you never will. I'll stop you, McCall, somehow. I can handle that, boys. We're still partners, John, if you want it. No, I said I'd stop you. It's the last thing I ever do. Tie him up. Emily, I... Come on. I wish Horse would get back soon. It takes four men to replace him. Well, if you can't hold up your end of the work, brother, you know.
Look, why are we wasting so much time? What do you expect to find, anyway? Well, maybe you can see through a wall. Maybe you know how many guns we're up against. Of course, had a rifle and a revolver with him. If they took his guns, that's all they took. They took Jose's guns, too. They want us out in the open. They wouldn't have brought Jose's body to the house if they didn't. All right, Adam's right. Come on, let's get going. I'm sorry, I was thinking just about horse. Cut! You look mighty unhappy, ma'am. What you need is a little loving to cheer you up. Leave me alone! Maybe we should have tied the girl up, too. Shall we go after him? Not yet. Let's see how far he'll get with a sick girl on his hands. It's all right, huh? I'm right here by you. Get you something to eat if you're hungry. The woods are full of good things to eat if you know what you're looking for. I just want to rest for a long time. Well, we we can't stay here too long. They're gonna be after us. I don't care. I, I really don't care. That ain't no way to talk. Let me help you, Miss Emily. to see you hurting so, Miss Emily, that's all. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shout at you. I can't hardly stand to see nothing hurt. It's as pretty as you are. Now, you stay right here. I'm going to take a look around. running forever. You carried me half the night. Why don't you rest a few minutes? I'll keep watch. <sighs> Do you really think I'm pretty? I think you're real pretty. See, me, I, I think you're as pretty as I am ugly. You're not ugly, Hoss. Forgive me for saying it. Please. Oh, it's all right. I, I've heard it before. We best move on. And by what right does a murderer like old man Cartwright tell you where you can mine and where you can't? This man, Flannery, he didn't even own a gun. And old man Cartwright shot him down! You want to know why? All right, I'll tell you why. Because the real gold strike is on the Panorosa! 
Not in that blue stuff they've been running into over at Washoe. That's why right, Cartwright and his boys are willing to kill and they'll keep right on killing. Move in on those murderers. And get out of this blasted blue stuff and into the real gold strike. I'm with you, McCall. In fact, we're all with you. Right, boys? Hello, me and Horseshoe Canyon. Working out better than you hope for, boss. Old man Cartwright and the two boys, and they're coming in alone. Oh, well, good. They'll never know what hit him. Come on, and bring my partner with us. <coughs> of course, I'd like to explain to you about Blake McCall. You don't have to explain nothing to me, Miss Emily. You see, I only saw the good side of him. Well, I reckon that's the way it is sometimes. You, you look at a cactus and you see a rose, because cause a rose is what you want to see. I don't reckon there's anything wrong with wanting to see something good and pretty. Sometimes I even do that myself. I get sort of lonely-like, and I look for good and pretty things. Pretty things do you look for? Well, if if it's a springtime, there's this canyon I go to. It's plumb full of dogwood, and there's a thousand blossoms on every tree. And there's a smell of the damp leaves in the air and the little ferns around on the ground. Sounds lovely. I was hoping you'd say that. Why? Because it's sort of a special place for me, and well, I'd like to take you there. I'd like to show you the little gold-backed ferns. You, you press them on your hand, and, and the gold comes right off just like it started us right out of the sky. I ain't never took nobody else there. But I'd like to take you. I don't think there's anything else I'd rather see. Miss Emily, I want you to stay right here on the Ponderosa. Hoss, don't you realize I'm very sick? I know that, but I want to take care of you. I want to take care of you all of my life. I couldn't bear it having you feel sorry for me. Oh, I ain't feeling sorry for you, Miss Emily. What, what I'm trying to say is that I like you, and I want to be right back. And Adam and little Joe. McCall's got at least a dozen men down there. Boy, and them don't stand a chance. I gotta stop it. Of course you can't. You'll be killed. Miss Emily, I gotta. You can't go. Tip off old man caught right in his boys. You all right? Yup, boss. 
Ah, oh, Hoss, looks like you have things under control. Yeah, Ragnar, I suddenly lost my temper. All right, you clam jumpers, get back to your diggings. It was McCall's idea, Mr. Cartwright. I didn't want no part in it. Get off this land, all of you. Yes, Move. sir. Yes, sir. All right, Penning. Paul, wait a minute. Little Joe, you got it all wrong. Mr. Penning here saved my life. Well, Pennington, I guess we owe you thanks. Thank you. Is Emily all right? It's fine. We got to get a doctor for her. What's old Doc Riley doing up there? He sure has been up there a long time. Well, how is she, Doc? She wants to talk to you, Mr. Pennington. doctor say? What the doctor had to say isn't really very important. Would you take that? Huh. I'd like to go back to San Francisco. What? Emily, you know what the doctor's there told you. This is a climate for you. Why, in three months' time, you'll be completely recovered. John, you know better. Oh, I don't know better. I refuse to give up. It isn't a matter of giving up. It's being able to face the truth. I had to face the truth about Blake, and I think that makes it much easier for me to face this. I'll find another doctor. Well, I'll do something. No, John. You've done much more than the brothers should do anyway. I don't want to be a burden to you during the time I've left. I'm going back. Well, then I'll go with you. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you to go on to Warsaw and to this new Virginia City. Just the way you planned. Oh, well, you think I'd leave you? I want to go back today. Today? Why? You're in no shape to travel. Please let me do what I have to do. I'm not... I'm not really so brave, you know. It's just that I've accepted it. And I don't want to take a chance on tomorrow. There must be something I can do. Yes, I'll tell you what you can do. Get my clothes from the wagon because I want to look my very best. Crossing the Sierra into California, and the wagon master's gonna meet us down at Truckee Meadows and take good care of her. That'll be fine, Hoss. Thank you. God bless you, John. She didn't have to go back so soon. I wish that too. Maybe I ought to go along with you. No. You need it on the Ponderosa. Hoss, tell me about the canyon. I ain't so good about talking about it. The gold-backed ferns that you press against your hand? 
and the gold comes off, just like it was stardust right out of the sky. Amen. Come back this spring, and it'll be there just like I told you about it. Will you come back? I'll take you there. You go there, Hoss. And when the spring comes, and the dogwoods in bloom, you go to the canyon. And I promise you, I'll, I'll be there. I love you, Hoss. What's the matter? What's wrong? What have you been telling these people? You must have known Miss Pennington was very ill. Hoss, you quack. If you told her something... Do you think it's a pleasure for me to tell a dying girl she's got only one month to live? You're all liars. Paul, make them tell me they're lying. It's God's will, son. to do. 